Hey, how's it going everybody? This is George from the Network Tribe and welcome back. Today, I launched a quick question on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you wanna follow me, you can find the links below on what are some of the topics that you guys want to learn about? And so I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and get some feedback and find out and I can get to actually teaching you guys something. So pretty overwhelmingly on my LinkedIn account, I had like three or four people in there like back to back to back say, hey, I need to learn a little bit about SD-WAN. So I said, you know what, let's go ahead and dive into it. This is gonna be probably the first module of a couple of modules discussing SD-WAN, right? So I wanna get you, maybe not from A to Z, but maybe A through M, you know, kind of halfway there on what SD-WAN is so that you can go out there, have a conversation about it, understand what it is and what it means for the industry, and then go out there and learn either SD-WAN through Cisco or through some other type of solution like that. So let's get started. So the first part about learning about anything is understanding what it means. SD-WAN stands for Software Defined Wide Area Network. You guys are probably already familiar with the term wide area network. I'll go into that in a little bit, but SD, I want you to think about this uh, acronym and then kind of put it in your pocket and come back for the next module. SD is, stands for software defined, okay? Uh, I'll, again, I'll go into what that means, but for now, I wanna talk about what it actually means as a traditional wide area network first. Because in order to understand what SD-WAN is and why we need it, we must first understand where we are today with just a traditional WAN. So I drew out this very simple WAN network topology, okay? So we have a campus site with a head and router. That router is taking us both to the internet through an internet service provider and through a wide area network. Usually this wide area network is also being provided through some kind of uh, service provider, right? So this might be some kind of MPLS. So let me go ahead and this might be an MPLS. It might be a least fiber, it might be a dark fiber. Some kind of service that allows you to connect your campuses and your branches all together, right? So your branches, as you can see, a lot of them might connect straight to the WAN and others might be able to connect both to the WAN and to the internet itself. So this is called a direct internet access from the branch. So DIA, just kind of keep that in mind. Now, I went over these three things. MPLS is a service that's provided through you through some kind of service provider. And usually that costs money. The larger you need that bandwidth to be, if you need to do 100 meg, one gig, 10 gig over that MPLS link, that's gonna cost you money. But it's far more reliable than doing all of your company uh, workloads and pushing it all through the internet. Second, if you look at a lease fiber, again, this is a service where you are essentially leasing from your service provider to provide you essentially just a fiber link, a fiber run from your campus to the branch site through some kind of method, right? And you're leasing that out from them. This is a slightly more expensive than an MPLS circuit. Uh, and then lastly, we have dark fiber, which is the most expensive. The reason we call this dark fiber is because in one and two, you do not have to provide the equipment to light up the fiber for the wide area network. In the dark fiber scenario, you actually have to provide the routers and optics that actually run the wide area network yourself. You also have to dig the trenches or pay somebody to dig them for you or buy them off of somebody else. This, in a sense, is giving you kind of the first downside to wide area networks is the fact that it's so very expensive to do this. Now, the way that some organizations have decided to combat this is through using the internet. So of course, using the internet is less expensive, right? So we kind of combat that. However, the internet is the internet. It's lossy. We lose connectivity to it all the time. 
Uh, if you don't have you know, 4G LTE along with direct internet out, out here, you're probably gonna lose. Uh, you're not gonna have quality of service over that because when it goes through the internet, you don't know what direction it's going through. So it can become very lossy, right? So I'm gonna just put up here, what are the type of technologies that you can use over this? Now we've been using technologies such as DMVPN. DMVPN with IPsec tunnels for encryption. Because the other thing about the internet is that it's inherently insecure. So if you're gonna send any corporate information over that, you need to do it through some kind of encryption, right? And you do this through a tunnel. You can also do it through GRE, which is effectively one of the technologies of DMVPN, but without IPsec, it's not secure, right? You can then do IPsec tunnels as well on their own through the ASA. There's a lot of technologies that you can use to do this, right? And again, this is less expensive However, the cost for this is that it's very lossy and lack of quality of services, quality of service, right? So these are the struggles that we face today. And one more struggle that I'm gonna talk about here is this whole movement to the cloud. Now, this movement to the cloud is something that's taking the industry by storm. Every day we have more and more applications, more and more workloads that are moving from on-premise geared out to AWS or Azure or some kind of hosted application. Now, this let me paint this scenario for you. Let's say that you're trying to use WebEx and you're, you're at branch one. If you're at branch one and trying to use WebEx, why would you want to go through the WAN like this go from here through the WAN to get out to the internet. You're using up precious money and bandwidth to use this connection, right? How do we control application traffic from using the, the direct internet access instead, which is right there, instead of going through the WAN? So application control is another very important thing to keep in mind here. So application control, application control control it's another big function and it's something that sd-wan handles as well so you can then go ahead and create policies that say if i'm going to be using dropbox or if i'm going to use office 365 or some kind of other cloud solution i wanted to go through the internet instead of going out my wan that way I can pay for as little of the WAN as possible. So I've already given you guys kind of a teaser as to what a traditional network lacks and what SD-WAN is trying to solve as a result. In the next video, I'm gonna talk specifically about what makes SD-WAN so software defined. And then we'll probably go over some scenarios as to how this technology works and then how it actually solves our problems at a technical level. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to leave me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that bell icon, and I'll see you guys in the next one.